Okay. The Right Honorable Prime Minister. Before beginning, Mr. Speaker, I would like to reiterate my congratulations to the member for Carleton for his new role as leader of the official opposition. We all have a lot of work ahead of us and we're going to work for a better Canada. Mr. Speaker, last week, Canada lost the only sovereign that most of us have ever known. It's important to take these moments here in Parliament and across the country to recognize the service and the leadership that she offered us. When someone lives until 96, this should not have come as a surprise. And yet, her sudden absence has struck us all palpably and profoundly. Her Majesty was everywhere, on coins, her portrait hanging in Parliament and post offices, her televised Christmas address, a cosy ritual in homes from coast to coast to coast. Her, the Queen meant so much to so many of us, and she exuded a humility and compassion that provided comfort to all. I was extraordinarily fortunate to have known Her Majesty throughout my life. The first time I met her was in 1977, when I was just a little boy. When I would meet with her as Prime Minister almost four decades later, in 2015, I joked that the last times we had met, she had been taller than me. She responded with a quip about my making her feel old. Her sense of humor was one of her many great qualities and one of the many reasons why she was one of my favorite people in the world. She embraced her role as Queen of Canada, our Queen, our Head of State. Her conversations with me were always candid. We talked about anything and everything. She gave her best advice on a range of issues. She was always curious, engaged, and thoughtful. Canadians and be forever grateful for her counsel. In a way, everybody knew her. Canadians feel like they've lost a family member, a family member who grew up alongside us. See, she was only nine years old when she carried out what was perhaps her first official duty for Canada, appearing on a postage stamp. That was in 1935. Her Majesty was with us for important birthdays, like in 1967, when she cut Canada's centennial cake on Parliament Hill. Our country came of age under her reign. It was Her Majesty who proclaimed and signed the Constitution Act of 1982 and our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. These pillars of our democracy help uphold the stability of our country and keep us free. Her Majesty. Her Majesty felt at home in Canada. She came to Canada more often than to any other country. And as she said just a few years ago, whether it be attending a chariot race at the Calgary Stampede or watching uh, athletes at the Olympic Games in Montreal, whether that be listening to an Inuit welcoming song in Nunavut, or to the sound of bagpipes in Nova Scotia, I have always felt not only welcome in Canada, but also at home in Canada. The Queen had a profound appreciation for our culture. In 1964, she said that she was happy to know that there existed in our Commonwealth a place where it was expected of her that she would speak officially in French. It's a language that she loved a lot and that she spoke impeccably well. Mr. Speaker, many words have been used to describe the qualities that mark the legacy of Her Majesty. Words like duty, service, devotion, stability. Each of these words 
mark a slightly different aspect of what she gave to us. When we think of duty, we reflect on how the queen embodied the crown above all else, of how her final public act was a constitutional one as she invited the United Kingdom's new prime minister to form government. And her last public statement was one offering condolences to survivors and the loved ones of the victims in Saskatchewan. When we think of service, we remember how in 1945, as Princess Elizabeth, she donned a uniform and joined the Allied efforts, including those of more than a million Canadians, during World War II. When we think of her devotion, we think of the images and the stories of Her Majesty as a wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. We think of her devoted family who is mourning with grace and love for her. But when we think of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, we think especially of the stability that she brought us. Her 70-year reign is unequaled. Last June, we celebrated the first ever platinum jubilee of a Canadian sovereign. Throughout her reign, Canada knew extraordinary pace, uh, peace and prosperity. Prime Minister Louis Saint Laurent said when he addressed this house after the death of King George, her father, in 1952, we have in our Commonwealth nations a system of government as free as any on earth. Mr. Speaker, today the world is in a tough place. We're all reeling from an unprecedented global pandemic. Putin's brutal an unjustifiable war is threatening global stability. Around the globe, democratic institutions are being challenged. But Canadians can rightly be proud of living in one of the strongest democracies in the world. Our institutions are healthy, our debates are robust, and we have an enviable stability and resilience despite, or perhaps because of, Canadians' vast diversity of beliefs, backgrounds, and perspectives. It is this very strength and stability, represented by the Crown and embodied by the Queen, that Canadians have always benefited from. And we, as parliamentarians and Canadians, dedicate ourselves each and every day to those democratic principles. Each of us sitting here in this House, has chosen to serve our communities and our country. We also do so in the knowledge that our challenges of our time in public office are time limited. But for Her Majesty, public service was her entire life, right up until the very end. She had an unflinching, enduring commitment to service to building a better world and a better future. All of us here know that sacrifice requires, sorry, that service requires sacrifices. And the Queen did so with grace. Her selflessness and dedication is a model to remind us of the weight and the importance of every day we sit in this house and to inspire us as we go forward. In our constitutional monarchy, the Crown's function in our government is to be a bedrock for our Constitution and to transcend the daily political debates. Our new King, King Charles III, demonstrated his commitment to the larger sweep of history with his most recent tour that included a focus on the generational work necessary to achieve reconciliation and fight climate change. The stability of our overarching democratic institutions gives Canadians assurance and peace of mind by caring for, uh, so we can all focus on the issues 
that matter the most, like taking care of people, of our economy, of our communities, and of our planet. Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, before concluding, I wish to offer on behalf of all Canadians my sincere condolences to the royal family. This weekend, I will be traveling to London with former prime ministers and governors general to assist uh, to attend rather the funeral the state funeral of her majesty which will take place on Monday. That same day to mark her passage, Canada will observe a national day of mourning and will organize a commemorative ceremony. I hope that next Monday Canadians from coast to coast to coast will take a few moments to think about the incredible heritage that Her Majesty has left us and to think about what she represented best. Mr. Speaker, Queen Elizabeth served her duties and her peoples up until the end, there for all of us until her final moments. We shall all miss her immensely. But I know, we all know, that our new sovereign, His Majesty King Charles III, will uphold these very values that we speak to today and continue her legacy. Long live the King.